So, hello everyone. Um, so, at Lenaro we work with ARM hardware, uh, and especially the HPC servers, and so we work with bare metal servers. So, we need to have um, a set of tools and an infrastructure that allows us to uh, provision and install the whole open HPC stack, run benchmarks, and in general analyze the performance of ARM servers and see if we if do a CI and um, see the performance gain and um, try to get a, a clear picture of what is happening. So we do this with uh, multiple tools. So we got a provisioner, which is Mr. Provisioner. Jen we use Jenkins as a job dispatcher. Um, the HPC stack we use is OpenHPC, and this whole thing is installed and coordinated with Ansible. So, how do we set up the lab? Uh, so we have to house the services and the tools. We have multiple KVMs. Uh, we use Libvirt, and so the provisioner, the Jenkins, and the other services that are regrouped in the file server are all installed on those virtual machines. Um, these are installed by an Ansible recipe that is um, more or less all contained in the HPC lab setup. You see the link just there. So how would we, um, for the network setup of this um, administration um, part of the, of the lab, uh, we use static IPs. We have two different networks. Because we use bare metal servers, we have the BMC network which is used to administer all those servers, reboot them, and in general access the IPMI uh, soul. Um, and we have the other main network, the provisioning one. Um, of course, on the, both of, the net, of those networks, we run DHCP. This DHCP is hooked up to the Mr. Provisioner so that they talk to each other. Um, so as I said, all of this is installed via Ansible. And um, we use, as well, <coughs> SFTP to store all the results of the test we do. And we, of course, need to be able to store them securely and uh, provide a, a private storage space. Because our members, which are private members, um, so Huawei, Qualcomm, KVM, whatever, they uh, do not want um, the public or oh, anyone to be able to compare easily their servers so a Huawei server to a Qualcomm server so we need to provide them with a secure and private storing space and we use as well um, a package cacher because we need stability in the lab and we need to have a fixed and set environment to do all our tests um, there is a private git repository the whole thing is not public because um, there is some configuration in the Jenkins since it's all hooked up to the LDAP. That is, of course, we can't share. Um, <clears throat> so uh, one of the big services, big tools we use is Mr. Provisioner to do all the provisioning of the bare metal servers. So, and this includes uh, talking to the BMC to reboot it, to reboot the server and pixie boot it, of course. Um, and this, I'll, so, I'll show some screenshots after that, but uh, of course this, um, we also have console access so we can monitor serial output from the machines as they are being provisioned. Um, the Mr. Provisioner is built in Python um, uh, with the Node.js front end and uh, Postgres SQL back end. Uh, it talks to uh, the Kia ISCs, Kia DHCP, and um, which features um, events and um, an easily uh, dynamic uh, network, uh, subnet, um, and all of this is done uh, per MAC address. Uh, we provision them with first the bootloader, the bootloader chain loads um, the the Pixie installed from the distribution, whether it be CentOS, OpenSUSE, or Debian. And 
Um, Kia also features, um, also accept a Mr. Provisioner providing um, a machine discovery, so um, that is easily accessible. And all of this is automated. Uh, the Jenkins, we have a couple of jobs. Um, the management of the Jenkins is all done via Ansible. Um, everything is in a GitHub repository, meaning everything is versioned and very easily, well, easily uh, manageable. And finally, the file server, as I've already mentioned, needs a secure and private storage space. And uh, we've got a package cacher and some storage for the tool chains that we use for the benchmarks. Again, uh, because we need a fixed and set um, environment that doesn't change between runs. A reproducible environment, sorry. So here is Mr. Provisioner. So this is uh, what you would see if you click on one of the machines in the, in the Provisioner. So you have a quick overview of uh, some of the parameters, the architecture, what's its status, um, the BMC associated with it, and uh, multiple interfaces. We have the BMC interface in it as a quick reference. This is how we do it. Um, this is not necessarily uh, compulsory. Um, you've got a couple of actions on the side. Uh, so you can access the console, reset the IPMI console, and of course, Pixie reboot and reboot and power cycle the machine. As you see above, uh, there is uh, the um, other um, the other uh, the services provided by the provisioner, which is uh, how the images you have, the precedes you use to automate all the installs, the list of BMCs, the discovery tab, which is the provisioner talking to Kia to see which machines have been brought up on the network and the multiple networks and infrastructure uh, architectures that are um, or the we delve into how the provisioner itself works and the different settings associated with the different machines. So here are the provisioning settings. Uh, as you can see, there's a sub-architecture which corresponds to which bootloader you will give it, you will give the machine on Pixie Boot. And then the kernel, kernel command line, initRD and pre-seed files that we use to provision the machine. Um, there's uh, the users that have access to this machine and can do stuff on this machine. The users have SSH keys associated with them and these SSH keys are then used in the pre-seed to provision the machine directly with those SSH keys so that you don't need a root password, there is no password, no users, there's only SSH keys and um, SSH um, authentication. Um, and of course, there's the event log, as you can see, you can see the DHCP requests um, and in general the DHCP traffic, so you know if, um, the, if the machine has effectively uh, installed the, the OS and has correctly rebooted and asked the DHCP for an IP address, meaning it's in initialized at least uh, the IP stack. Um, this is the serial console. You can download the log, which is very useful for Bugzilla reports. Um, and then we come up with the Jenkins part. So here are the main jobs that we use um, in the lab. There's the benchmark job the open HPC install and test suite jobs, and there's the whole provisioning uh, job ecosystem. The provisioning job ecosystem consists of two main entry points, which is the cluster provisioning job and the machine provisioning job. So you can either provision the whole cluster or provision one single machine, which is especially useful for benchmark. So we have the multiple configuration options, Note that this is still in progress. Uh, we have the benchmarking job. We support Lure, Shimeno, and OpenBlast with all the different options and configurations available directly from the job interface. And the OpenHPC jobs install and test suite still 
work in progress, but we have a couple of options. And here is the OpenHPC uh, matrix that we have to test. Uh, so all the different uh, dimensions um, that we need to make to be able to test in different configurations. And here, especially what is important is the different provisioning options inside the cluster. So how does the master provision the slaves? So this is either done all flat with Ansible or done with Werewolf. At the moment, only Werewolf uh, supports R64. We haven't, we, be, we will work on XCAT support, hopefully. And in conclusion, we have tried to make our lab very modular by developing iteratively and trying to get the best design. Um, we have multiple configurations because we need to test multiple dimensions. This is low maintenance because everything is automated and wonderful and the SDI is versioned so we can easily pinpoint problems. And finally, um, we have multiple options with OpenHPC because we need to test all the different uh, configurations possible in the environment and we are still working on some of the werewolf options, but this is something that will come. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much.